I'm Kathy Corison. I make the Corison Napa Valley Cabernets. I've been in Napa for almost four decades. I arrived there days after graduating from college. I was studying biology and minding my own business and took a wine appreciation course, grabbed me by the neck and ran with me and I've never looked back. When I first got to Napa in June of 1975, it was very rural, uh, maybe even a little redneck up in the hills and depressed. The California wine business was still scratching its way out of prohibition and was just exploding already. And then the judgment of Paris really gave it a kick. There were only 30 wineries when I arrived in the Napa Valley in 1975. Now there are 470-ish. The judgment of Paris was a tasting put on by a retailer, I believe, in Paris. And he took New World wines and paired them with great wines from, from France. And in every category, the Napa Valley wines bested the great, great wines that, from France. And that just made the whole world stand up and take notice. My first vintage was 1978, commercial vintage. I had just gotten out of uh, school studying winemaking at the University of California, Davis, and I, I'm quite sure in 1978 there had never been a woman hauling hoses in a winery before. That year there was another woman at Inglenook, and uh, fast forward to now, there are, there are women integrated at all levels of winemaking. But full control winemakers are still only 10%. Both my wines are 100% Cabernet Sauvignon. And I do that because I focus on one little tiny corner of the world, which is the bench land, which is just the alluvial fans coming out of the western hills that I believe can grow Cabernet as well or better than any place in the world. And it's a combination of the extremely well-drained soils and then the amazing climate which is hot enough to get Cabernet ripe. It takes a lot of heat to get Cabernet ripe. But because we're geologically an extension of the San Francisco Bay, every single night um, during the summer the fog comes in through the Golden Gate and up into the Napa Valley and the, the temperatures plummet. Cabernet as a consequence gets fully ripe because of the heat but it, then it keeps really good color and natural acidity because of the cold nights. So it's just a, a special little spot. And then Kronos Vineyard is the only vineyard I own and it I had the great fortune to stumble upon one of the last old Cabernet vineyards in the Napa Valley. So not only is it on the Rutherford bench, which is magic enough, it's also an old vineyard. It was planted in 1971. It's on St. George rootstock and it sets scraggly clusters of little tiny berries and the uh, wine that results is incredibly um, concentrated and complex. And, has a wonderful uh, fullness without being alcoholic. All my wines are under 14% alcohol. My goal has always been to make wines that are both powerful and elegant and have moderate, moderate alcohol, good natural acidity. So I pick earlier than many in Napa. My winemaking is very traditional. There's nothing particularly um, remarkable about the winemaking. It, there is something very remarkable about the vineyards. Gentleness at every stage. I'm trying to basically get the good stuff out and leave the bad stuff behind. And that means get all the color and flavor and um, all the good velvety tannins that are characteristic of the benchland out and keep anything that is bitter or um, harshly astringent behind. And so I'll tend to ferment it fairly warm um, at the beginning of fermentation and then cool it down and finish cooler. In my experience, all the good stuff just oozes out of properly ripe Cabernet. My wine is aged in 100% French oak barrels and each year 50% of those are new. I need those barrels to make the wines I make, but I don't want you to be able to taste the, the oak. Um, French oak is wonderful um, with Cabernet because the flavors in the oak grade seamlessly into the flavors of the fruit and so you don't really know where one ends and the other begins. The idea is to have everything be balanced and subtle and complex.